Number three is the first question in the non-calculator section of this exam. So there's some key ideas that we need to make sure we understand before we do this problem. One of them is, is that the area underneath the derivative f prime represents the displacement on the antiderivative f. So in this case, the graph that we've been given is the g graph, which happens to be the derivative of f. So we should establish that f prime of x is equal to our g function. Secondly, if I want to actually find values on the antiderivative f function, I need to first start with a starting point, some point we'll call f of a, and then we need to, from that starting point, we need to use the, the area under the curve from a to whatever point x, which represents the change in the antiderivative f. So the starting point plus the change in the function will give us the value of the function. So taking a look at number three, it says the graph of the continuous function g is the derivative of f. So that establishes this point here in that the g is f prime. The function g is a piecewise linear function, so we have a bunch of straight line pieces from negative 5 to 3, and from 3 to 6, it is a parabola, and the parabola function is 2x minus 4 squared. Part A asks, if f of 1 equals 3, what is the value of f of negative 5? Well, that f, one, f of 1 equals 3 establishes that, that, sorry, that gives us the starting point. Okay, so that starting point that we have in point 2 here, the f of a, that represents our starting point. To find the f at negative 5, we need to then find the displacement from that starting point. So it's going to look like this. So f of negative 5 is equal to the starting coordinate, which is f of 1 plus the displacement from the starting point of 1 to all the way to the value that we want to establish, which is negative 5. That's going to be underneath the g graph. Okay, so I'm just going to use the t so that I'm not mixing up with my x x values. So in this case here, we then want to plug in the known parts here. So we have f of negative f of 1. We've established that that's equal to 3, so we're going to start at 3. And then we need to know the displacement from 1 to negative 5. Now, because we are integrating from right to left in this direction, we know that the in this direction, above the graph, above the x-axis represents actually a negative displacement, and below the x-axis represents a positive displacement. Okay, so this is backwards. We usually go from left to right. So what we can do is we can change this up, the change the expression up to make it a little bit easier to look at. And we're going to change this from integrating from negative 5 to 1. So we're we're going to integrate from left to right. Because we switched the bounds, we need to make that sign the opposite. So now when I look at this, I can just find the area. And the way I've established this is left to right. So the area below is going to be negative and the area above is going to be positive. So in this case here, when we integrate in this direction, above the x-axis is positive, below the x-axis is negative. So looking at the different parts here, this area is a trapezoidal area. This That area represents 10.5, negative 10.5. Uh, and maybe I'll shade that with a 
a little bit differently here. So this area here is going to be, that area there is going to be negative 10.5. From 1 to 0, we have displacement of 0. From 0 to 1, that area in here, that area has an area of 1 or plus 1 or displacement of plus 1. So just adding that up, 3 minus the net displacement is going to be negative 9.5. So then the value at f of negative 5 is going to be equal to 12.5. 12 12 and in this case here, it is that is our value at f of negative 5. When we take a look at the mark scheme here, we get one mark for the integral and then one mark for the answer. So if we set up, once, as long as we set up that integral, we get one mark and then the second mark is for the answer.